um, uh, had to say uh, about this assignment. And, uh, oh, here's one right now. Elliot, when you're ready, come on up. Okay. Um, God is a really great and creative God, like when he made the dragonfly the woods, in the woods. God is really great. I feel closest to God when I'm in nature, seeing all the things he gave us and listening to all the sounds. Nature gives me a chance to be alone with God and spend time with him. Nature teaches me that God is closer than you think and when he, when he is a great and creative God. God shows us things through nature, his love, kindness, grace, and how much he loves, how much he cares for us. He also supplies all of our needs. In Matthew 6, 26, it says, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Also in Matthew 10, 29, 31, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more value than many sparrows. God cares for us a lot and shows us wonderful things through nature. So now I'll try to share the other ones with you. Um, this one was written by Joshua. He's one of my eighth graders. I learn how much God loves us because he created companions and family for every animal. He didn't create us to be alone, so he gave everyone a partner. God also provides for all the animals' needs and cares even for the sparrows when they fall. God is a loving God and cares about everything that he created, especially us. When I look at nature, I see how creative God is. He made thousands of plants and animals for us to enjoy. Nature is a way to learn about God and his love. Uh, this one was uh, shared with, by Colton. He's one of our seventh graders. You can learn a lot about God in nature. God was very smart in how he created the earth and everything that lives on it. God had gone through some serious planning to create every living thing. God especially took time to create us in his own image. That's cool. God cares for everything on this earth. He loves the little things and the big things, but God's biggest accomplishment is us. Uh, this one was shared by Alex. He's one of my sixth graders. I see God in many ways, like the color of the sky and the grass. It's also beautiful, and even the waves in an ocean or lake. But the one thing that I really like is the animals, how they look and how they move. It's all so amazing. So I see God in all of it, but I see God most in my family and friends. And this one was shared by 
Ileana, uh, she's one of my eighth graders. The first thing that you learn about God in nature is how wonderful and brilliant of a creator he is. You can see how much time he spent on this earth and the details in everything that he created. You can see what he made for a good place for us to live. He put everything we need on this earth. We have food in nature. He gave us good fruits and veggies. He gave us plants to give us oxygen so we can breathe. He gave us building materials so we can build houses to live in. God gave us so much in nature. We should praise him for it. Every time we go outside, we should admire what God gave us. From the whales to the birds, God made it all perfectly for us. And this one was uh, shared by Esteban. He's uh, one of my eighth graders. I see God in the rain. It rains down when we need it. But God can be seen in different ways in nature, like the sun, because he sends that to warm us. Trees to produce fresh air and fresh fruit for us. God can be anything in nature because he gave us nature, he gave everything, even his own son, to die for us. So love God with all your heart, just as you love nature. God bless everyone and have a good day. So it's, it's really a privilege for me as a teacher to uh, spend time with young people every day. And this is just part of my crew, and I'm just very proud of each of them because I can see grow, growth taking place, not just physical growth because they're getting bigger, okay? But I can see academic growth, but more importantly, I see spiritual growth happening. You know, when, when we have in-depth discussions, uh, you know, in worship or Bible class or other times during the day, I can see that the Lord is working on them. And the Lord isn't finished with any of us. He's working on all of us all the time. And like I said, if you really want to learn about God, spend some time with young people because they have a unique, genuine perspective. And they will just be brutally honest with you with what they feel. And that's the point they are in their walk with Christ. And we need to encourage them as much as possible. Um, grades kindergarten through grade four will be sharing during the church service, but uh, our portion was for this service with you folks. Happy Sabbath. Thank you, David and young people. It's very special to have you with us today. For those of you that are visiting, our only ad uh, adult Sabbath school class will be held right here. For the young people, you go up the stairs and the first place on your left is for the primary and just down the hall a little bit on the right is for our juniors and up. So you're dismissed at this time. Thank you.
Yes. One, two, three, four, five. Nothing. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Okay, let's let's go ahead and start with prayer. Dear God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to to discuss uh, your mission and your mission to us, Lord. And we ask for your Holy Spirit to be here, Lord. And um, uh, we're thankful for the work of Mr. Smith and um, how the students give their own um, own view of who you are, Lord. And um, as each of us discover more of your character, may we understand how to change our character, Lord. Maybe we need to surrender and... Um, we ask you to be with us during the study. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, today is God's Mission to Us, part two. And uh, just a brief overview. Um, it kind of goes through like the, um, how the Godhead impacts the mission. And then it goes through how do we make disciples. And then it talks about the first angel's message. And it talks about the first commission with Abraham coming to the disciples' commission, and then finally our commission, and then finally the you know, you know the mission of the whole the whole world. What are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to um, take this commission that God has given us and bring it to the whole world? And um, it's funny, like I think mission is a topic as you know um, as I see the school um, developing and growing and. Um, as I interact with the kids and I see the fruits, you know, um, of the labor of, of Mr. Smith here, um, it's encouraging, right? Wouldn't you say it's encouraging to see young people understanding, like, you know, in the first angel's message, it says, give glory to him, worship him, the creator, right? And so once, I think that's the first thing that we need to do is, like, we have to know who our God is, right? And we worship the creator. So, um, yeah, so in the memory text, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. So this is, encompasses the whole this lesson. Um, so why, what has happened to this world? Why do we have, what, ha, what has happened? I think I'm thinking of a three-letter word, starts with S. What, what, so what, happened, what has happened? Sin has happened to this world and what does god is god um does he want us to come back or is is he aloof does he want us to come back i think so right he 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 tells us in his words that he wants us to come back he wants to draw us you know he has that loving kindness and he wants to draw us and um i think as he draws us and then as we're drawn to him what do we do? We study his word. We gain a better understanding of who he is and what he's about, okay? And um, so I wrote this statement here. When we understand who God is and we are drawn to him and through his word and the Holy Spirit, we can manifest his character through surrender of ourselves. So um, I think it's important that we remember we have to surrender and it's not merit bakes works, but we have to surrender uh, to him, and then he can have his work in us. Um, um, then it says, once we understand, what do we do with what we understand? What do we do? We, we kind of share it with others, right? So everyone has a mission field, you know. The school has a mission field. Uh, just this week, uh, Jason, we're uh, he's the director, and I'm the co-director co of the Pathfinders, and we were talking about um, what, what is our mission as Pathfinders? What do we want to do? And a lot of the talk was about trying to, to make God real for them practically, you know, trying to, to draw them in and uh, trying to do it with the little time we have, right, with them, you know. And um, so 
Um, so we, we're always looking for mission, you know, uh, whether it's um, our workplace or whether it's, you know, the people who we interact, like, you know, some of our church member here is our drivers and they interact with people daily. Um, and they, they, they talk to them about spiritual things. They give them little books. So, you know, each of us can have a mission for God, you know. Um, if, if we're in our workplace, you know, with me, I have, a, I have a little tag. I work in the hospital. I have a little tag that says, may I pray for you? So I don't have to ask because before I didn't have the tag and I would say, then I would ask if they would wear like prayer and they would say, you know, sometimes they would not want prayer. <laughs> and so I have that there just to kind of say, okay, if you want prayer, and they say, you know, a lot of times, oh yes, and by the way, you can pray for me, so we can, we can stop in prayer, and I don't have to initiate anything, which is, which is nice for me, so then I don't have to get rejected as much, <laughs> right? So, but I think all of us, we should think about our mission, like where we are. Um, anybody want to share about their mission, what, what they do? Um, just think about that. I, oh, okay, Jason is right there. Wait, wait for the mic, bro. Also, I will, I will uh, bring the offering plate around the fellowship tent and mission in a little bit. So, if you want to give to that, you can get it ready. Yeah. Me and a, another gentleman that works with me were just talking about this, this this week. He's also an Adventist, but I'm. I have a construction crew, and I have several guys that work for me who are not Christians. But you can, the way they talk and the way they react to the way that we talk and the types of conversations we get into, you, you can totally see God's drawing them and drawing them. And they don't really understand it most of the time. They don't Praise see the it. But if you're looking for that, you, you can see it. Um, and it's just, it's, it's cool. It's cool how God puts specific people in our lives, you know, and it's like Jesus said, a, a city that's on a hill can't be hid. It's mm -hmm. not that we shouldn't try to hide it. It's that if really, if, if Christ is in our hearts, shining out, it can't be hid. And if we're mission specific minded, which is easy not to be, it's easy just to, you know, go to work and do our thing and, and you know, accomplish the task at hand. Mm -hmm. But if we look at it through a little different lens, you can really see how God puts people in our paths who are, who are searching in one way or another for him. So it's in my job, it's, it's mostly with my employees. That's how I have the most intimate contact with people. Sometimes it's customers. I get to plant seeds and, and things, but most of the time it's with employees. Yeah, it's important that we have something in our mind, you know, because then, you know, if if we're not, if we don't have water to draw out to other people, then, you know, what do we have, you know? Why are we sharing, you know? So if you have a, a water coming down with a stream, and then there's one water that has a stream and it feeds another tributary, but if there's one, what happens to the water that's just kind of there? And it just kind of is stagnant. There's no water flowing out, and there's just water coming in. What happens, you know? Becomes like a meadow, it becomes like, you know, very, very, very static, static, yeah. Go ahead, Lloyd. Well, I have, I made up a series of Bible lessons. I call them cure packages from God. Yes. And I hand out and mail out some this yesterday. Uh, there was uh, another person who accepted the offer to start a series in this. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I mean, I was just talking to Tom this morning, and he said he was preparing a story about, um, a Bible study about um, the, the rapture and how it's the second coming. It's visible. It's not secret. So, you know, we have different church members working towards, you know, educating, you know, to know the truth. So um, now we're going to move on to um, uh, about the, the Godhead and um, the triune God in, in the mission. So in, I think, John 20, 21, 22, if someone would read that for me, it would be greatly appreciated because I think it's a really good verse to, to kind of, that kind of shows um, the, the different parts of, of the Godhead. So if well, somebody would want to raise their hand and we can get you a mic. Uh, it's John 20, 21, and 22.
Okay, Neva. Then the same day, that evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, then came Jesus and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. And then Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And 22? Yeah, 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Yeah, so here we have a picture of, you know, God kind of gathering up his troops, you know. And see, like, it says, the fa it says, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. So in this passage, you know, he's saying, okay, um, the Father has sent me, and I do what the Father says, right? And then later, he says that you're going to receive the Holy Ghost. So there's a connection for the mission, you know. It goes from the Father to the Son to the Holy Ghost. Um, so, and it also says in our memory text, it says, what does it say? In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost, we're supposed to baptize and make disciples of all nations, right? So that is, that is, that is our purpose, you know. Um, um, there's some more. Um, I have so, a question. Sure. So in verse um, 22, it says, um, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. So um, first of all, can we effectively do our mission unless we've received the Holy Spirit? I, I don't think so. And then the other is to me, I mean, I just, just in isolating this verse and reading it, mm -hmm. it's like, it's just way too easy. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think in my mind, I'm thinking, what, you mean I don't have to do anything? Yeah. That it's just, it's, and, and is there a significance of him breathing on them? It's just, I think we could take this one verse mm -hmm. and, um, and really unpack it and, and, gain some truth from it but it just to me it's those two things stood out to me that we need the holy spirit in order to effectively um you know do our mission and then also just that it's it just seems so simplistic yes. for for my in my humanness yeah i think yeah i think we're makes we we make it complicated right because <laughs> we don't <laughs> go ahead lonita well, following on on what she just said, um, when God created Adam, the only way Adam had life was that God breathed into his nostrils. Mm. And that was through the Holy Spirit. Mm. And if he's breathing on us, then uh, to receive the Holy Spirit, he's giving us life. Without the Spirit, without God, we have no life. Mm -hmm. We have no life of our own. As to the other part of her question, I don't think I have an answer to that. <laughs> yeah, so in, in the lesson it says, you know, God created the world, you know, and then he died for us in John 3, 16. And then anyone know offhand, what is the Holy Spirit's work? What is the Holy Spirit's work to do for us? It's in, found in John 16, but anyone who could say it, we can. Okay, we got two. We can. Uh, we can give it to Steve here, right there. So, what are the? What's the Holy Spirit work? One work is to comfort, to be the comforter. Mm -hmm. um, he convicts us of sin, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. There's more, I'm sure. Yeah, there's a verse. There's maybe Jason. Do you? There's one in John 16, there's specific, there's three things. Yeah, it says he will, con he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. And of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Wow, that, 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 is, that is fully, you know, as I looked, to, like one uh, Wednesday evening we had 
if you think about those three things and you think about the sanctuary, you know, okay, he convicts us of sin, so we're, we're at the sanctuary, we're, we're cutting our lamb, right? We're, we're, we're saying we're, we're, we're unworthy, we need to do that. And then it says of righteousness because I'm not going to be here, Jesus is not going to be here. So the Holy Spirit is to be there. And then if you think about the sanctuary and the, the three things we have to do, we have to kind of read God's word, we have to, we have to share, and then we have to pray. So those things will develop ourselves because, you know, you know, God will show you things little at a time, depending how willing you are, how, how much of a surrender you give him. <laughs> the, he, he can show you many things, but he can, he, sometimes for us who are stubborn, we have to learn a little bit at a time, you know, and it's still a work of Christ. It's, you know, it's not merit-based. It's still a work of Christ. And then of judgment, you know, what's, what's, what happens at the end of the sanctuary? It's like, you know, the judgment happens. And it's like we have to understand, like in the first angel's message, it's like judge the hour of his judgment has come. And we have to worship the creator. So those are the things that kind of um, help me understand how the three, you know, the three of uh, our Godhead helps, you know, understand how we do the, the mission. You know, how do we do the mission, you know? It's like a reproducible thing, right? So for each person we go to or each people would meet, we have to have a sensitivity about us to say, okay, what does this person need? If they're like kind of mad, if they need, you know, help or, you know, we have to be sensitive to these things in order to, be, to minister. If we, you know, you go to the, you know, you go to the grocery store, you're like, okay, I have to get this and this and this and I'm out of here, you know, and, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't wait or you don't, you know, you don't see who, who, who needs help. So it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's a habit you have, kind of have to develop, you know, to kind of, to see where there is a need. So, um, um, Jason. Well, I think that goes back to the memory verse here that, you know, our mission is to go and make disciples, right? And uh, for myself, I struggle with this a lot. Like, it's easy to to be task oriented okay today I gotta do this this and this but if we wake up every day and our main goal is to to share Jesus mm. and we ask the Lord like hey I'm you know I have to do this I have to go to work I have to go grocery shopping whatever it is but my main goal is not to get through life and get groceries and and build houses or whatever my main goal is to do what you want me to do to mm. whatever that looks like and as Adventists, you know, we really should, it would look different for all of us, right? Like, I'm not a pastor, mm -hmm. um, I'm not an evangelist or whatever, but if we all woke up every morning and we all had the same goal, mm -hmm. which was to share Jesus so that mm -hmm. we can all go home, that would look different for each one of us in each of our different careers and our daily lives. Mm -hmm. But that goal would still be there because you can't do it without the Holy Spirit. Yes. So if you wake up and you hit your day running, and you haven't charged those batteries and you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to miss all the opportunities along the way. And I think that's why we're here in 2023 still, is yes. because we, we're, we're not really fulfilling that great commission. By the way, each of you who want to speak, the reason that we use a mic is because this is being live streamed. In fact, last Sabbath I was sick and it was really nice. I got to be at Sabbath school. <laughs> well, and, and too, you know, it's like sometimes we have these lessons that say these are the steps of how you witness. Mm -hmm. Well, you could be so caught into that and you're not catching what the Holy Spirit says that person needs. Yeah. And I can remember one time a church that I was at, they were saying they didn't have enough people. And I said I volunteered. And God had told me the next time they went out, I needed to be there. And the guy that was doing the things, he was going through these things and, you know, telling the guy, well, you need to be saved. And the guy kept sitting there saying, but I need to know God called me personally. And he was just, he kept going through the things that, you know, and it wasn't until they were actually chasing the guy around until they got next to me. And the guy had told me I was supposed to just pray there and, and listen. And when the guy ne got next to me, I told him that God had told me I needed to be there. 
the next time. Mm. So if God had told me that, to be there for with him, he quite obviously, that's what the guy needed to know. Mm -hmm. He didn't need to hear one of these verses. He needed to know that God talked to him. So if we're not listening to the Holy Spirit, we're not going to know what that individual needs to hear. Amen. Yeah, definitely. Buck? So this is just the last two comments. I, I just read this, and it's, it is easy to just kind of dash out the door or be focused on what you're going to do. Uh, and this was written in the 1870s. Mm -hmm. The Bible is not studied as much as it should be. It is not made the rule of life. Were its precepts conscientiously followed and made the basis of character, there would be a steadfastness of purpose that no business speculations or worldly pursuits could seriously influence. A character thus formed and supported by the word of God will abide in the day of trial, of difficulties and dangers. The conscience must be enlightened and the life sanctified by the love of truth received into the heart mm. before the influence will be saving upon the world. Yes, very, very good. That's uh, definitely words to think about. Um, so if you want to, I won't go through, um, but uh, how I like to see the, the, the working of, if we go back to John 14, you can study it on your own time, but there are three disciples that ask three questions, and those three questions kind of fill in the Father, who is Jesus and the Holy Ghost. And so it goes from, you know, let your heart not be troubled. And then it goes, then these disciples are asking questions. But if you study that, it's, 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 a, good, it's a good thing to see how each of the Godhead, you know, contributes to the mission. So in, in uh, John chapter 14. So we'll go on though. Um, and let's turn to Matthew 28, 16 to 20. And this part is about making disciples. Um, Matthew 28. So if would someone want to read that for me? Robin. Which one? Robin, thank you. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. When I read that this week, it, it jumped out at me, verse 17, it says, well, verse 16 says, it's the 11 disciples that went into Galilee. I don't know if there's others or not, but it seems like maybe it was just 11. Mm -hmm. And then verse 17, and when they, I assume that's the disciples, saw Jesus, some worshiped him, but some doubted. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that stuck, stuck out to me too, about the doubting, because here we are, you know, post-resurrection, and, you know, they've seen Jesus already, and people are still doubting. For 40 days. Yeah, so, you know, hearts can be really hard, I guess, and maybe ours are, you know. Well, you um, know, we, we, look at, we look at people back there, though, and we think that, oh, if, if I was there, yeah. oh, I wouldn't, well... <laughs> Well, be careful. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's amazing. So it's just a couple of notes, you know. Um, you know, when he, Jesus, they were told where to go. So, like, the first verse talks about where to go. And then the second one, I, I, that was the same. It says, some doubted. And then, and then three, it says, there it mentions the Godhead again, right? You know, Go there for baptizing. It's, it's there again. And then, then he says, well, then for is teaching them, he commanded you. So I think teaching is a great word because if you're not teaching, then you're, you're harboring, right? <laughs> right? 
if, if whoever you interact with and you're not, if you're not sharing, if you're not being that flowing fountain of water, you're going to be, sooner or later, you're going to be a cesspool, right? Because nothing will come good if you're, not, if you're not sharing, right? So it has to come in, it has to go out, and it must go out. You know, it's not like, okay, you know, some of us, like, we have a little dam, and we say, okay, not today, Lord. And then we lift it up, yes, Lord, yes, well, let's share the blessings. And then he said, nope, not today, Lord. So... And that's the part of full surrender, right? If we, if we don't consecrate ourselves daily, it's not gonna, we're not going to be able to experience the, the latter rain, the full power of the Holy Spirit, because we're holding back. We're holding back of ourselves. Yes, Amy. Oh, oh, I sorry. Gwen and then Amy, sorry. I, didn't I was see concerned about those verses about some doubted also. So I looked a little bit up in the Spirit of Prophecy, and she says that that group was about 500 people, oh. that the 11 disciples had gathered many others. Um, and then she talks about this, but some doubted, so it will always be. There are those who find it hard to exercise faith, and they place themselves on the doubting side, and these lose much because of their unbelief. So it wasn't just, that verse wasn't just speaking of the 11 disciples, it was speaking of a group of 500 people. Well, yeah. so, go ahead, Amy. so I was just thinking about in, in sharing and in teaching, and I think, and you're talking about, you know, becoming a stagnant pool and not sharing. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we don't share um, for a variety of reasons, but one I think is out of fear, and um, and I think sometimes, you know, we can um, become broken or hurt, mm. and that can cause us to have more fears mm. about sharing. And so yes. I think that when we have that mindset, it becomes about us rather than about being a channel for God to use. When mm. we're a channel for God to use, and we're here as his disciple, as his um, workman, mm. then we aren't thinking about our own you yeah. know, feelings, and then we don't have those fears. Mm -hmm. Then we um, are free to share. Thank you, Amy, for your comment. Go ahead, Ron. Just thinking about what Amy just said, um, you know, when we fear, that, I think that's part of the reason the Holy Spirit sent us a comforter. Mm. So we have courage to go ahead and share. Amen. 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 I think we have one up here, and then I think Lloyd over there, and then Bonita. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. It's, it's great to have a lot, a lot of people participating. Well, I like the fact that it says teaching and then the baptizing, because I remember talking to this one guy that he was so pushing the baptism and, and, and not getting into any of the teaching. Yeah. And, you know, putting somebody under the water if they don't know God and are not, that's, that's just pushing them under the water. That's not really baptizing them. And so I, I like the fact that we do, we don't baptize somebody unless we know they have learned. Yes. I mean, it's, it's good. To, and it's, there's, there's a comment in the teacher's notes here. It says, it talks about on the current state of discipleship. Sad to say, this phenomenon implies that one can become a Christian without necessarily having to become a disciple of Christ. So, like, like a lot of the focus is baptisms and people, and there's less focus on discipleship. That's what the quarterly was saying. I think Lonita was next. Well, this thing about fear makes me think of the verse here in 1 John uh, 5, uh, 4, 18. There is no fear in love, no, for, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Mm. We love him because he first loved us. Okay. If we are truly, if, if, we're, not, if we're not loving, we're going to be fearful. If, if we don't have that love of Christ in our hearts, we, we don't have the courage to speak out. And 
I, I raise my hand. I'm guilty of this. I don't, I don't always have the courage. Yeah. But going back to what someone said earlier, if we commit ourselves in the morning, all of our plans, and I know this works because I've done it myself, and I've really been trying to do it recently. As Mrs. White says, lay your plans before the Lord yeah. and say, Lord, if I, these are what I, want, I have in mind today, but if you have something different, change my plans according to your will. Yes. Yeah. And you know, he may change the order of what you do, but you end up getting more done if you do that than if you hadn't. Uh, if you tried to do it on your own. So it, he works everything out, even when, or especially when we commit it to him. Amen. Go ahead, Lloyd. Well, um, the, 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 the quarter that says, go make disciples, but that isn't what the Bible says. The Bible says, as Robin said, as Robin read, go teach. Mm. Our job is to teach and let the Spirit make the disciples. Amen. Okay. Um, the, oh, the other one is, other ideas. You know, the thing that wins is found in, uh, 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 I'm sorry, Revelation 12, 11, <coughs> says, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb mm -hmm. and by the word of their testimony. Mm. When we have been, as, uh, as otherwise noted, if we have been washed by the blood, buried with him in baptism, then a witness can be effective to do what the Spirit wants it to do. Yeah. Yeah, I think with fear, when you have fear, you have mistrust. Does that make sense? And David over there. But yeah, when you, when you develop this fear, like if you're listening to too many of those conspiracy theory YouTube videos, you know, <laughs> fear will develop in your heart and you'll say, what do I need to do? Oh no, you know? <laughs> So we have to make sure our our assurance is in Christ. So go ahead, David. I I would like to submit a, a thought to you that I've spent a lot of time thinking about. You know, not just the the physical act of teaching that we need to be doing to teach others about Jesus, but I would suggest that um, we also need to be teaching by the way we live our lives. Amen. You know. The, the disciples and the uh, followers of Christ gathered in the upper room until the Spirit descended on them. And we need to be doing the same thing humbly every day, you know, starting the day with prayer. And as uh, Jason was saying, you know, what do you want me to do today? Mm -hmm. We need to let the Spirit lead us. But the greatest uh, sermon or teaching experience we can provide to somebody, a lot of times it's going to be the way we live our lives. Mm -hmm. And if we're not being a Christian, but now we're going to talk about Christ, there's a disconnect for people and they're not going to be interested, mm, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, that's, yeah. So now, now go ahead, Neva, and then we're going to go on to the, the okay. first angel's message. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, um, I think I'm the, uh, the queen of much afraid. <laughs> if any of you have read hind feet in high places. But I've always been more of the fearful type, especially when it came to feeling shy, I guess. But my mom was very bold about just talking to anybody about anything, and she would embarrass me, you know, or handing literature out. And sometimes I would be embarrassed about that. And, uh, and yet that example lived on with me, and I can't not keep something in my purse and pray and God does give me opportunities. And just last Thursday, I was uh, picking up a prescription at Walmart, and the man at the window, when he tells you the instructions, you know, and I thought, this Adventist 
a lot of people have probably shared something with him, and I don't want to overdo it, you know. <laughs> but here in my purse was this Steps to Christ. And this little book, I'm a little bit embarrassed to share because it's newsprint, and it's just, I mean, we have some beautiful ones that are so much nicer than this. But I felt impressed, and it was all I had, so I handed it to him. And he's, he goes, I said, have you seen this book before? He says, yes. Years ago, I, I had this book, and I read it. And um, it has some other material in the back, you know, about things happening in the world. And yeah, I, I'll take that. I, I need to read that again. Yeah. <laughs> and so that, you know, those kind of things help me get over my fears. Amen. So um, I like the first angel's message just talking about it answers questions for me. And the questions are where, who, why, and what. So the where is found in the first part of the verse where it says, we're going to spread the gospel to all nations, kindreds, tongue, and people. And then, then the who is, fear God and give glory to him. And then why are we doing that? Because, because this hour of his judgment has come, and we should worship him who made heavens and earth. You know, back to what the the, the students were sharing this morning, bringing in like, oh, you know, we have all this nature around us. We live in like not a densely populated area. We get to enjoy everything. So we can use this as an entrance, like, you know, who made all this? You know, could it be just by chance? The seasons, the, the way the oxygen and the trees, you know, it's just, it's just amazing. And then, and then, yeah, so that's the what and, uh, and it said, this is a good question, why must the gospel be, be linked to the judgment? Why do you think that is? Anyone have a good answer for that? That was a question from the, from the, from the thing. Why does the gospel has to be linked with the judgment? This is true, you don't need a savior, you know. If you don't know that you're in peril, you don't need a savior, that's a good answer. Anyone else have an answer? Why does the gospel need to be linked with judgment? Ron has a question, answer back right there. Well, the gospel brings a lot of change to us, and uh, wonderful change. Um, but the devil's trying to tell everybody that that change is not so wonderful. Mm. So the judgment comes along to see if we accepted letting Jesus change us. Mm. That's the gospel. Amen. And I think it's the good news, right? Go ahead, Flip. So, judgment came right after sin, right? In Genesis chapter 3, where the first gospel message of the Savior is explained. And it says that the serpent will strike the heel, but the Savior will crush the serpent's head. Mm. And so, if the serpent or Satan is destroyed and God gave Adam and Eve and all of us free choice, mm -hmm. then in that good news, the fact that we're redeemed and we can choose to be saved is that choice to not choose mm -hmm. to be saved. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a choice we have to make. Neva? Well, I think of Jesus commission in another place that says, uh, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Mm. And the gospel, as in Revelation, is the uh, everlasting gospel that will go to all the world to the end uh, of the earth. And uh, it, they are linked there in Revelation and and in Christ's commission. Mm. Yeah. Yes, they are. Go ahead. Well, I was just thinking of your question. Like, how does judgment have to figure in? And it, it seems like as human beings, we're kind of, I don't know if entitled would be the word, but we really sometimes forget that there's consequences to things. Mm. 
you know, and I think that that, that first angel saying, fear God and give him glory, he's trying to give a, an explanation why we need to do that. The hour of his judgment's come, and, like, it's going to be real, yeah. and he's provided somebody to, to take your judgment for you, but either way, judgment's happening, mm -hmm. and, you know, I think that that's important to, to let people know, because I think as, as human beings, we don't really grasp the fact that we're going to pay the piper someday. Yeah. 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 I may think I'm a pretty good person, but when I look at Jesus and learn of his love, then I see that I'm a sinner. Mm. Yeah. And so we need to share that news with other people so they see their need for Christ, and then we can give our lives to him and be ready for his soon coming. Amen. Yeah, that, that realization is, you know, that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit, you know, and going back to the three things, like the Holy Spirit has to convict someone. They, you know, they're, they're fine. They share once in a while to their neighbors. They're, they're a good neighbor, but the conviction has to happen in order for change to take place. So, you know, Mark, go ahead, the Bob. thing is they're sharing all the time. Like was mentioned earlier, that you may, you may not be sharing Christ, but if you're not, you're sharing the devil. You actually, you, your life, your life, whatever you're doing is being watched. It, even when they don't think they're watching you, they are. They are. So on to the next lesson. You know how um, talks about Abraham and his, the first kind of, foray into the gospel. It's like, through you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And, you know, as we read, you know, I'm reading Joshua and Judges because, like, the PBE team are studying it now. And it's, there's, there's a lot of judgment in Judges. <laughs> there's a lot of judgment in Judges. And so, but then, you know, I was talking with, I think, Ramona yesterday <laughs> as we were, he says, you know, that is the long suffering of God. You know, when, when, when the people of Israel from Joshua to Judges to after the kings, it's like he was still long-suffering for them. He wanted them to come back. Yeah. Oh, wait, I am. You know, we are living in the time of the judgment. We're on probation. Throughout the Bible, I found that our probation is the seventh uh, of of the, the last, it is the last, the seventh of, of, the, of seven mm -hmm. probations that people were, nations and one person was were, were given. And so we have these, it hurts me really. And I, I, I spent a lot of time in agony, agony mm -hmm. over what's going on like is planned for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I was in Aggie the first time I, I saw the advertisement about it. Almost reached a point of terror. It, it, it still hurts me that this is going to happen. This is planned for tomorrow by mm -hmm. somebody who's supposed to be preaching the gospel, and yet the preaching Nothing. spiritism. Mm. It's actually what it is tomorrow. Yeah. I've, um, I was with a patient uh, this, this, this week, and um, he comes in for, you know, he, a lot of people come in the hospital, and they're, they come in for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which means like obstruction of the lungs. And so I was in there with a the doctor, and, and then I said, well, you know, you try to do it lightly. Well, you got to give up that smoking, you know. It's not good for you, you know. <laughs> and every time you come back to the hospital and you need oxygen and you need, a, need like, albuterol treatments, it's like, well, that's kind of a form of judgment, but you're still alive, so you have a chance to make a change. You know, it's like, there's consequences when you don't, you know, it's hard because people are so ingrained with their habits, it's like we need to form good habits. So, so this is this is powerful because Christ gives us our mission, right? Mm -hmm. 
Christ gave his disciples their commission, and we're all disciples, right? People that walk after him. He made full provision for the prosecution of the work and took upon himself the responsibility for its success. So long as they obeyed his word and worked in connection with him, they could not fail. Go to all nations, he bade them. Go to the farthest part of the habitable globe. Labor in faith, for the time will never come when I will forsake you. I just think that's very powerful that we think, you know, we, we want to or we need to witness or, or do this work. And we have to remember that his disciples, before they went out, they had to take from the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. They had to grow in that experience following his resurrection. Mm -hmm. So we need to take from God first mm -hmm. so we have what the world needs to give them. Yeah, so we're about out of time. Uh, if you want to make one more comment, you may. Well, I just want to say from my perspective, standing here, I only see maybe one Sebastian back there, another one back here that's has a little ways maybe to probation. The rest of us, it's right at our doorstep. I mean, I'm 79 years old. How much longer do I have if I don't start allowing God, just yielding to him? If we think we don't doubt, then, then are we yielding completely to him? It's really we don't trust. Mm. That's, what, that's what I feel I don't mm. do is trust. I think so. Because we have to trust. It's time. I think, that, I think that we are going to end this stay on earth, not so much when we spread the gospel, but when we live the gospel. Amen. Anyway. Amen. Yeah, I mean, it has a good thing to think about, um, like wherever you're working, to kind of think about what is your mission. Um, it may be obvious, but um, God has placed you there for a reason, and think about your mission, what kind of groups of people are around that we could minister to you know I know a lot of um, the there's there's some Indian tribes around here that are really poor in health so they could probably use some sort of mission there's there's Russian groups here around the area there are different people around in our area that we can you know spend some time in thinking about how we can minister to different people um, young or old you know we're in kind of the youth so we try to think of ways to kind of engage the youth and how can we make it theirs, you know? How can we make the mission theirs? And, you know, given our track record of not making good disciples, as the lesson says, how can we be more of a good discipling church? How, instead of just a baptizing church, you know? So, so those are some of my thoughts. And, um, and we pray that the Holy Spirit will be through with, with us this week as we close. Uh, let's go ahead and bow our heads. Dear God in heaven, Lord, we thank you uh, for the missionaries who are out there. We, we ask you to be with them, the ones that are out there in the world, you know, ex expanding your kingdom. But we also pray also for the mission here at our school, Lord. Um, there's, the devil is working hard at, and trying to prevent things, Lord, but we ask you to, um, the Holy Spirit, to be with each one of us so that we, so we can make a difference in those children's lives. We ask you to people to be with the people who are working, who have a regular jobs interacting with people. We ask that your power be with them as they share. Help us not to the fear, because the time is coming, Lord. We know there are more rumors of wars that are happening, and um, it seems that your coming is near, Lord. It seems like there's more agitation, Lord, but help us to be ready. Help us to fully surrender to you. Help us to keep that water flowing from you and then to others, Lord. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, yeah, and the, um, we, we have communion today, so church, we're going to start in about five minutes, so 1040. So take a quick break, and then we'll be back for church service. Thank you, folks. <laughs>
probably the kids will sit up there, but you can sit anywhere. Yeah, so I mean, I'm sure if when the Ramona and the kids go up there, they'll probably be up, up here in the front. I was thinking about sitting right there in front of where you were. Seated. That's fine, that's fine. I am. Oh, you are? I'm I a am. physical therapist. Well, there you go. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Vance. Vance, good. I went there to Walla Wall College and everything. Oh, really? Very, very good. Vance, that's know. cool. So, yeah, that's cool. Well, you're visiting from, or just? Well, no, we're here now. My mom, Juanita Myers, used to always come here. Oh, yes, and, yes. And I'm her oldest son, and my wife and I moved here to help be here closer with okay, her and well. everything. So. Yeah, and we just Vance? Got here this weekend. In fact, half my closers. Well, well, thank you for visiting our church. <laughs> we hope you come more. Thank you, Vance.